Hello hey guys and welcome back, so if you're getting into photography and you most probably need an affordable DSLR, so hold on cause this might be your choice. Yes, it's the Nikon D3100. If you have been searching for an entry-level DSLR, you might come across this camera because there are many people out there, even professional photographers are recommending this DSLR. So let's see how it performs, shall we? So let's start off with the overall look and design. So it uses high quality plastic for its main body. So the size is a fairly small, which is great to bring around with, but it's just too small for a comfortable grip. It has a nub to grip on so the camera is not going anywhere. And for the price, this is what you're getting. The button placement are convenient. Most of the main controls are easy to reach with your right and left thumb. So at the top, you have the power switch, shutter button which could be pressed halfway to autofocus, the info button to turn on and off the 3 inch LCD screen, the aperture control, the mode dial, and a lever to choose between shooting modes. Speaking of shooting modes, this camera has single shot, burst shot, timer, and quiet mode. So at the back, you have all the switches to navigate around the menu. And at the front, dedicated flash switch and a function switch that you can map to do a few different stuff. But I just leave it to control my ISO, which is the default setting. And at the bottom, of course, it has tripod mount, battery slot, and SD card slot. So this camera is equipped with a 14.2 megapixel CMOS sensor. And for the test shots, I'm gonna use the kit lens, which is 18 to 55, f3.5 to 5.6 VR lens, but I highly recommend you to buy a much better lens if you have the budget. So the images are great, the amount of detail are not bad and the colors are on point. And here are some sample shots. We will do a great job on well lit area, but we will do a great job in low light. So let's do our typical low light test. So as you can see, it's doing quite a great job as long as you stay in the native ISO, which is 100 to 3200. So the autofocus is decent with 11 AF points and it has focus tracking that traces the object that you want to pull focus to, but I just prefer to pull focus manually. So the burst shot could do up to 3 frames per second, not that bad actually, but smartphones do have a much better burst rate. And the quiet mode, which reduces the sound of the mirror flapping up and down. It's not completely silent whatsoever, it just dampens the sound. So let's get back to the modes that are available in this camera. Let's start off with the guide mode. Once you enter the guide mode, you are greeted with fancy graphics. And then from there, you can quickly learn the basic of photography. Play around with setting and just getting you up and running. But it's way better to just watch a tutorial video on YouTube. In this mode, the camera will set the shutter speed, aperture, and ISO. This mode is just same as auto, but instead of popping up the flash, this will bump the ISO up for low light shots. Maybe you in an environment that you cannot use flash, where this could come in handy. This mode will optimize your settings to shoot portraits. In this mode, the camera will use higher aperture just that more things could be in focus. This will keep the shutter speed at a higher level just because you want a sharp picture of a kid playing around. In this mode, the camera will use lower aperture to blow out the background or its fancy name, the bokeh. This will make the flash pop up most of the time, assuming that you are shooting at night. Then you have all the main modes that DSLR would offer. Which has a set of exposure to choose from, it is just like auto that lets you do some manual. This mode allows you to change the shutter and the camera will take care of the rest. In this mode, you control the aperture and the camera takes care of the shutter. And manual mode. This is the mode that I always keep it at. It lets you control everything which is great but you need to learn the basics of photography. So this DSLR has that shiny movie mode. I'm fairly surprised that Nikon included a movie mode in an entry level DSLR so it could shoot up to 1080p 24 frames per second and a few lower as the option. 
kinda hope it was 30 frames per second but it's alright cause the difference between them is not that much. The movie mode are disappointing. You could only shoot for 10 minutes and the quality is decent. But I could get a way better looking video with smartphones, especially the ones that can shoot 4K. So here's a quick comparison. So in terms of I.O., yes, GPS port, USB, HDMI, and auxiliary. Yes, there's no mic input, which is one of the biggest drawbacks of this camera. It takes away the video hype from that already bad video quality. So let's move on to the features that this camera can offer. Now this camera has D-lighting that brings down the shadows and composite lighting. This camera can shoot raw image. You could adjust the color balance right off the bat. This camera can do face autofocus, wide area autofocus, and subject tracking autofocus. It has a dedicated auto exposure and focus lock button, and the camera could clean its sensor by itself. Yes, that's quite a lot of feature for an entry level DSLR. So at the end, this camera is really great at stills, which is what it made for, and the movie mode it's just like a bonus. So I highly recommend any beginner photographer to get one of these cause it's fairly cheap for what you are getting. But if you already have a high end camera rig, you could make this as a backup camera. Maybe to put inside a car so that you don't miss any rare shots. Or just in case something went wrong with your main rig. And no matter what you have with, just be creative and you will get amazing shot. Just remember that the best camera is the one that you have with you. Bye.